A very good morning to all. Looking at important headlines from the Hindu newspaper for 16th August. On the front page you have, Modi announces new post of Chief of Defence Staff on Independence Day. So, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has announced this post of Chief of Defence Staff 20 years after a review committee on Kargil war had suggested it. And he has set aside 3.5 lakh crore for Jal Jeevan mission for water conservation. And he also calls in for population control. So, he says the announcements have followed up summing up of what his government has accomplished in its first 75 days. So, this is the detail given here, you can see. So, the Chief of Defence Staff post will have far-reaching ramifications. It is said it will bring in coordination among the three services, Army, Navy and Air Force. So, this is the detail given here. Also, strong push for population control was made. He, the Prime Minister said that practicing a small family norm uh, is like performing a form of patriotism. Then this is UN Security Council to hold closed-door meet on Kashmir today. So, China has called for consultations after Pakistan letter to UN Security Council. So, closed-door meeting will be held to discuss Kashmir issue, that is India's dilution of special status. Also, Poland, Poland's mission to the UN confirmed so as such. So, the presidency of UN Security Council is currently with Poland. Then below you have a day earlier we saw that uh, the mob lynching case of Pehlu Khan saw the six accused acquitted. So the Dalwar Sessions Court gave this ruling and now the police it is said had failed to nail the lynching accused. So there was serious lacunae in the investigation. And this is NRC re-verification only to avoid errors. So this is what Assam Chief Minister says. Supreme Court has turned down Assam's plea, but Assam government as well as the central government wanted a re-verification to be done in border districts because it is being seen that many uh, considered to be, you know, illegal immigrants have found their names in NRC. So, Supreme Court actually had rejected the plea because the re-verification has already been done, more than the percentage demanded by the NRC exercise. So, there is no need for any more re-verification is what the Supreme Court had ruled. Because again, it is politically being seen how many you know, in, uh, how many tribals have been excluded and how many Muslims as such or the so-called Bangladeshi have found their name. You know, allegedly Bangladeshi immigrants have found their name is what the government has been seeing. It gave it released the district-wise details as such too, which was against the Supreme Court ruling. So the sanctity of the data was also not maintained, and district-wise data of names which have been included and excluded was released by the government. And uh, based on that, they want re-verification being done. So, because many tribals, they don't have the documents in place. So, many have been excluded. So, that's a huge cause of concern. On page 3, you have Green Manual refuses to modify order on clearing of landfill sites. So, National Green Tribunal has refused to modify its earlier order where it has directed Delhi Cantonment Board to contribute rupees 10 crore for clearing land landfill sites in the capital. This is a liability of Delhi Pollution Control Board, Delhi, Delhi Cantonment Board as such. And it, you know, so it has been asked to pay 10 crore for the same. Then on page 6, you have Article 371H will not be tinkered with. So this is Arunachal Pradesh Chief Minister Prem, Pema Khandu who has uh, allayed fears of revocation of special provision of Article 371H which is there for the state of Arunachal Pradesh. It says that the rights are aimed at developing the backward areas of the state of Arunachal Pradesh. So it protects the economic and cultural interests of the state. So Article 370 for Jammu and Kashmir has been abrogated, but Article 371H for Arunachal Pradesh will stay is what Arunachal Pradesh government wants to emphasize on. So it, uh, the Article 371H vests the Governor of Arunachal Pradesh with special responsibility with respect to law and order situation in the state and in the discharge of his functions in relation thereto. Then on page 7 you have Chhattisgarh hikes quota for OBCs, SCs. So Chhattisgarh which has a major tribal population here, the Chhattisgarh Chief Minister has announced increase in reservation. So in Chhattisgarh reservation is more for scheduled tribes. There is 32% reservation for scheduled tribes. And SCs have 13% reservation, OBCs have only 12% uh, reservation for SCs and only 14% for OBCs. So, 32% reservation, so you can see this overall becomes 48%. Uh, 
So that is 48% reservation which is there now. But now the Chief Minister has announced increase in reservation. So ST reservation still continues to be 32%. For SCs, it has been increased from 12% to 13%. And for OBCs, from 14% to 27%. So now, of course, 27 plus 4, 13 plus 32 makes the reservation go beyond 70% uh, 72% reservation so this has been the announcement of Chhattisgarh government then on page 8 you have no more joy for those who make these things of beauty so it is said while the cultural icons of Andhra Pradesh that is these Kondapalli toys are growing in popularity their creators are a neglected lot so Kondapalli toys are considered cultural icons of Andhra Pradesh and one of the most sold handicrafts in India and abroad across online wholesale and retail platforms but their creators have to be you know uh, encouraged which is not the case on page 9 you have pension scheme for small traders yet to kick off so this is the center pension scheme for enters the government's pension scheme for small traders which prime minister narendra modi has mentioned in his independence day speech it is one of the promises uh, uh, met by his government since its re-election in may but it is yet to start. So according, this is according to the Union and Labor and Employment Minister. This is by Pradhan Mantri Lagu Vyapari Man Dhan Yojan Scheme. So it promises to provide pension to small traders. But it is not yet kicked off. So you can see the beneficiary will have to contribute a monthly amount. And as and after they turn 60, the scheme subscribers would get 3000 as monthly pension. So it is eligible, uh, those who are eligible would be those who have a turnover of less than 1.5 crores and are between 18 to 40 years of age. Then below you have booming agri-tech sector aims at solving supply chain woes. So 25% year on year growth has been seen in startups, tenfold increase in funding from 2014. So this is according to NASCOM, the, inf uh, the information technology industry body of the country. So, Indian farmers are facing poor harvest losses, post harvest losses, which amount to around 93,000 crore. But now, agri tech startups are trying to bridge the gap with demand driven cold chains, warehouse monitoring solutions, and market linkage that can significantly boost farmers' income if the benefits are you know, passed on to them. This is the issue covered here. On the editorial page, the first editorial is words and deeds. So this is how India needs Modi to infuse meaning to his Independence Day vision with action on the ground. So many promises have been made, many announcements have been made in Independence Day speech, but then they have to be, uh, there has to be action on the ground to meet those points. Like India is on the way to become a five trillion dollar economy in the next five years. So what steps need to be taken? How will this be possible in the current situation of demand and investment slowdown is important. And Jammu and Kashmir, here investment would come in. How that would happen when Jammu and Kashmir has been completely cut off. No communication has been allowed. No free communication has been allowed in Jammu and Kashmir. So that is also an issue. Then the second editorial is trade rhetoric. So this is regarding US President Donald Trump. Uh, his his threat that USA would quit World Trade Organization. So it says Trump is not furthering the cause of free global trade with his unfair attack on the WTO. So that issue is covered up here. The lead article, Rajapaksa Redux and a Democracy in Peril. So this is regarding Sri Lankan politics. You can completely skip this article. This is lessons after a great deluge. So this is regarding the floods in Kerala, how Kerala needs to adopt a watershed based master planning and review building bylaws is covered here. So this is very important in context of disaster management. And on Fridays on the OPET page, you have this parlay coverage in which a question is raised and views, counter views are seen. So this question is, is the removal of special status for Jammu and Kashmir justified? So article 370 marks the recognition of Jammu and Kashmir's history and the circumstances surrounding its accession to India. But now that has been scrapped. So views, counter views are given. And this is taming Ebola in Democratic Republic of Congo. So in Africa here, a randomized trial has shown two candidate drugs to be highly effective in curing the Ebola disease. Then this is continuation of the front page news. Like chief of defense staff is important to aid synergies. He'll be a single point military advisor to the center. So the significance of this post is covered here. 
and this is PM puts population back on government agenda. So the significance of Prime Minister Narendra Modi flagging the issue of population control in his Independence Day speech is important. You see. So that is issue, this issue covered here. Then on international page you have defying US Gibraltar frees Iran tanker. So Washington had attempted to seize the ship which was accused of violating EU sanctions on Syria but Gibraltar has uh, allowed a detained Iranian super tanker to leave the British overseas territory after last minute a US attempt to seize the vessel. So tensions have been diffused between Iran and UK. And here you have Second World War era bomb found in Kremlin. So, this is an unexploded Second World War bomb which is found in the grounds of Kremlin in Moscow during construction works. And on business page, you have global markets gripped by recession fears. So, inverted bond yield curve in the US is seen as a precursor and inversion reversed marginally on Thursday, Thursday but panic has remained. So, there are concerns of you know, recession globally. And this is CBIC seeks input to plug gift loopholes. So this is central board of indirect tax and customs. So it has asked domestic industry players to come up with a detailed and long-term solution to combat custom duty evasion by foreign sellers who are currently exploiting a loophole in the law on you know, evasion of duty. So this is a discussion which was held, a consultation which was held, you can see. So, there is a need to clamp down gift imports because many foreign sellers were evading custom duty by categorizing their products as gifts. Then, on page 16, you have plastics industry seeks export schemes, tax benefits for MSMEs. So, the plastic manufacturers who are finding the going tough amid environmental challenges have called for export promotion schemes for micro, small and medium enterprises in the plastic sector and also removal of anti-dumping duty on machines not made in India. So this is what they are demanding. On the last page you have new cure for deadly strain of tuberculosis. So the regimen has shown to drastically cut down treatment time in a clinical trial in South Africa. So this is a new cure which is been uh, tried in for tuberculosis and this is July hottest month on record for the earth. So here you can see CIs shrunk drastically is what the US agency says, US NOA that is National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And this is Everest climbers set to face new rules. So Nepal has proposed to tighten regulations after a series of mishaps amongst Everest climbers in the last season. And this is microplastic in snow raises population worries, raises pollution worries. So airborne plus particles can harm health is uh, known. So minute microplastic particles have been detected in the Arctic and the Alps. They are carried by the wind and later washed out in the snow. So this is a huge cause of concern. So these are the important headlines. One more here is regarding meta material. So this is smart clothing. So, researchers in Singapore have invented smart clothing, they say, which can boost signals and save battery life on wireless devices such as headphones and smartwatches. So, they call this invention meta material. So, they allow this meta material allows radio waves like Bluetooth and Wi Fi to glide across clothing between wearable devices and instead of radiating outwards in all directions. So, sensors and wearable technology such as Apple Watches and AirPods can establish stronger connections faster and save energy. So these are the important headlines. Thank you.